the iPhone 13 Pro, the mother of all cameras mobile. This is the iPhone 13 Pro in Sierra Blue, and I've been shooting on it over the last week, but I know we're all asking the exact same question. Is it worth the upgrade? Is this a device that you need if you already have the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max, or even the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, or 11 Pro Max? Is the iPhone 13 an essential upgrade Simply put, this is really gonna depend on what you use a phone for. The iPhone 13 is obviously amazing, but I think that the absolute biggest, newest feature is the cinematic mode. And this is actually a software-driven feature, but I gotta tell you, it is it's crazy. And I feel like if you're interested in making videos, whether it be a professional level or just even as a creative outlet, whether it's video making on your phone, like mobile filmmaking or filmmaking in general, you need to know what I'm about to go over. You need to know about the cinematic mode. A quick summary of cinematic mode would be similar to using the portrait mode in photography on your phone now applied to video, but I feel like that doesn't give nearly the justice that it deserves. It does so much more and I didn't realize it until I started shooting with it and editing. Now at first I laughed. I thought it looked so cheesy. I thought it looked like a third party plugin, you know, just like the fuzzy edges, but I'm glad that I didn't immediately dismiss it. You know, I went to the mountains and I gave it a fair shot. We already know that the iPhone 13 is great at throwing focus. You know, if you have two people looking at the camera and one looks away, it's gonna focus on the other person. And it does an amazing job at it. But let's back up a second because we need to dive deeper on what is actually going on here. We know that this rack focus is software based, which is cool, right? Wrong. This is very cool, very, very cool, very exciting, very new, very future, very underrated, very not talked about enough because this is insane, straight up. Whoa, the phone knows to switch focus on different objects. It's so crazy, Colin. When I first heard this, I didn't fully understand what that meant. Like obviously I knew that it knew how to throw focus and track different subjects. And I didn't know what those implications were until I tried to edit it. So you know me, I was just doing my thing, having my morning coffee, trimming a few clips to see what we had shot the day before. We had some mountains, we had goats, we had elk, typical Canadian things, I guess. <laughs> After trimming about 20 to 30 different clips, I kept noticing that there were these dots on the bottom of the screen. And at first I had no idea what they were for. I started to realize that every time there was some sort of change in the frame, I would see one of these little dots. And then I finally noticed that the dots that I saw on the bottom of the screen and the rounded square that I saw appearing around a subject's face were combined together in the top left of my screen. So out of curiosity, I tapped on it and it said manual tracking off. And the focus of the subject of my video changed instantly, which means that the phone automatically decided what it was going to track in focus. This blew me away. I had no idea why I hadn't heard of this before. I was in absolute disbelief. So immediately I picked up my phone and I decided to lock focus on the background while Kiara did her cheers to the camera, completely out of focus. And then I went into edit, and as soon as I hit that button, it changed the focus from the background of the image that I had it locked on to Kiara's face instantly. And that's when I realized that you can change what is in focus in your video after you've shot it. And those little dots at the bottom of the screen were keyframes, which means that you can actually manually throw focus in post-production using keyframes on your phone. Crazy. So for instance, in this clip, I tracked the camera to Kiara's face, and then as soon as she lifted up her coffee towards me, I threw the focus to the coffee and then back to her face in the image. And this is how it turned out. So even though I had originally shot it with both objects completely out of focus, Kiara and her coffee, I was now able to go back and throw focus from Kiara to her coffee and back to her with the background out of focus. Then I scrubbed through my other footage and I decided to take it a little bit further. So I had my friend Everett, aka Gucci, skating by on his skateboard and throw focus from the plants and the logs right in front of me to Ev on the skateboard as he went by me. It's crazy. It's like, I, I can't believe this. And not only can you change what's in focus, but you can also change the aperture that you shot on after you shot the video. So you can change the amount of focus on your subject, as well as the subject that is going to be in focus in your video, like after you shot the video. So here's some examples of what F2 looks like versus F16 on the exact same clip.
So now you have so many options of what to do with your clip in post-production. Like this is crazy. You cannot miss a shot anymore. You can completely change what your shot was after you've already shot it. And like, I, I honestly don't know how to feel about that as a filmmaker, but I know it's an amazing tool. Now, cinematic mode only shoots 1080, 30 frames per second, and you can't use the wide or you know the macro lens for it. And changing the aperture in post-production does not give you more light like it would mechanically, because again, this is all software driven. But look at the shots that you get on this phone. As filmmakers, we've waited for a camera like this. I know there was Lytro. It was like a VR camera that had this concept, but like wasn't able to feasibly bring it into the market. So an iPhone is like one of the last places that I would have anticipated seeing this feature, but it's here, it's finally here. But nobody broke down how insane and how revolutionary of a technology this is for you know beginner filmmakers, all the way to people who you know need more options in their post-production. Now let's get back to the main question of this video and also the questions that were asked through my Instagram stories. Is the iPhone 13, iPhone 13 Pro, 13 Max worth an upgrade in the investment? For the right demographic, yes. If you're looking to get into video, if you haven't already spent a ton of money on a video setup, this is an incredible opportunity for you to really get situated and start to figure out what it actually feels like to shoot more cinematic footage. If you're on like the iPhone 10 or below and you don't have that wide angle, I highly recommend, you know, you even get an 11 Pro. It's not a necessity for the everyday user to upgrade from the 12 to the 13. Will this replace DSLR or mirrorless cameras? Yes and no. I think it's pretty obvious that a DSLR camera is still a much higher level of production, but I am amazed. <laughs> I mean, like this is in a phone. It's never been more literal that these are camera phones. You know, the cameras with phones attached to them. So I think that there's a huge opportunity for anyone who doesn't have their DSLR or merely set up to jump on board and get one of these phones instead of getting the DSLR or the mirrorless. So it's definitely not the death of it for those higher paying clients and those bigger budgets. I'm like, I'm assuming we're still gonna be shooting those on DSLRs and mirrorless cameras and cinema cameras, but the barriers of entry to that marketplace have definitely been even further lowered now with this phone. Apps or raw out of camera? This is a tough one. So as I went to go and edit this clip in Visco, as I usually do, it wasn't able to handle the HDR footage and the ProRes footage. And actually, even when I dropped this onto my computer and started editing in Premiere Pro, it still can't read the HDR footage and that's a big issue. So for that reason, if I'm not shooting in cinematic mode, I'm probably gonna be using the third-party app still, just to make sure that I can still shoot in a high bit rate and know that I'm gonna be able to actually edit and color grade and use these clips that I'm shooting. Macro mode. Now, I didn't really want to waste any time on this video towards macro mode. Like, it's kind of cool, super niche. I don't know, like, any time in the last five years that I've shot any macro video, really. Um, it's very cool, and you can definitely do it on the phone. There's macro video mode, but I just don't really see a time and place for that. I mean, maybe some B-roll or a very specific detailed shot. I don't think that I'd be using a phone for those types of shoots, but you can definitely do it, and it's, it's really cool to try and have fun with. Drawbacks. As I mentioned, as I dropped it into Premiere Pro and even tried to edit the footage in Visco, there was a couple of issues with how the footage turned out. And then when I exported it, it just looked like really weird. All of the highlights were pulled back and it looked like I had no idea how to compress or export this HDR file. So that's a definite drawback. Not nearly as bad as when the iPhone 12 came out and you tried to upload a story and it would just go pure white. I don't know if you remember that, but again, this is gonna be on the other apps to catch up to this footage. I mean, like I'm hoping eventually or by the time that you get your phone, this problem is gonna be solved. Either than that, when I was recording footage and playing it back on the phone, it looked like very high motion clips, like skateboarding side by side. It looked like the ground was a little bit jittery. And obviously some of the fast motion just really isn't gonna pick up like it would on a mirrorless or a DSLR camera. But that's like kind of to be expected, you know, we're really pushing the limits of the phone when we're doing things like that. So you can try to use third party apps that have a higher bit rate of recording, but I've been really impressed. I know it's only 1080p, but I mean like, come on, like it looks great. And that comes with a smaller file size. A few notes. Cinematic mode, again, is only for the iPhone 13 for shooting, but you can edit it on the newer iPads and the newer Apple devices, as long as they're running iOS 15. So like, that's kind of cool. If you have an iPad and this iPhone, you can edit on the iPad, which is great. And then again, hopefully this will update into, you know, like the actual computers that we're using to edit. 
I just want to say that I was genuinely excited to edit this footage and I really wish that I'd shot more. Like I have more footage and I'm going to put together a two to three minute video with all this footage that will drop within the next couple of days. And I will be uploading weekly from here on out. So stay tuned for the short film I'm dropping, the behind the scenes to it, and a ton of more videos. But yeah, like I was editing the footage and I was excited. <laughs> like I love the potential of not having to carry around my entire setup and still get like insane footage on top of a mountain. So I personally feel like I'm gonna dive deep into shooting on this phone a lot more. But for now, we have that 30 second teaser at the beginning. I'll put it at the end of this video as well so that you can see that again. And yeah, overall, I'm just very impressed. Like, what are your thoughts on this phone? Are you gonna go and get it? Like, I've given you my opinion, but I'm really curious to hear what your opinion is on it. I know it might be a very niche upgrade for a lot of people. So I'm curious what, you know, what your thoughts are on the device because I mean, like, it's not cheap, that's for sure. And if you want a nerdy breakdown of like the editing side of this footage and answering some more of the questions that I had, but haven't had the time to go through and actually figure out yet, definitely let me know that in the comments as well, because like I'm gonna go and deep dive on this footage and do a little bit more of the breakdown of the ProRes. So drop that in the comments or any other questions that you might have on a more technical side. And I'll get to those as soon as I possibly can. I hope that this video was really helpful for you. I thought that this was such an insane need to know topic of conversation and like filmmaking and phones and specifically the iPhone 13. So I hope this helped you get the information that you were looking for or you've learned something new or now you're just like inspired to go out and shoot to get this phone or for the future of cameras and where this might go. Thanks for watching as always. If this was helpful, smash subscribe and check out this video one last time. I had a lot of fun putting it together. See you soon.